What's up, guys? So I hope you guys are having a good spring break. If you guys are at PCB, uh, Lauderdale, Miami Beach, whatever it might be, I hope you guys are out there having yourselves a good time. Middle of semester here. Um, I'm stuck in my office doing writing, but I definitely am looking at my definitely looking at my Snapchat memories and having a little bit of FOMO, wishing that I was out um, enjoying this time span like I used to. But what this video is going to be for today essentially is going over the Qualtrics uh, reviews that you guys gave me. Um, I kind of wrote up a, a little thing on this and I wanted to um, I wanted to kind of say it more in person here. I want to kind of get more of a personal feel to it just so you guys understand where I'm coming from and how I'm addressing these things that you're doing. Um, I understand that when you're reading your professor's writing, it kind of comes off a bit snarky and will kind of make me sound like an asshole. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to explain to you guys why I'm choosing the decisions that I'm choosing for this course and, and why I'm trying to make sure that it's, it's the most useful or helpful for you guys. Um, for the person commenting on the poor lighting in lecture rooms, I apologize. This is one of the few rooms where I can get privacy in the department. My actual office uh, chair is sad amongst a bunch of other grad students. So it's hard for me to record lectures unless everyone's gone. I don't like to stay after 6, 7 p.m. to record those lectures or rather get them done during the workday. So hence the terrible lighting in the room. So I apologize for that. But um, first thing I would like to say is I received a lot of kind words and positive feedback about the course. A lot of people seem to be enjoying it or they think that it's a good online course. Um, I understand that obviously this would be much better if it's in person. I sympathize and I completely agree with you. I would much rather be teaching this in person than online. Unfortunately, these are the terms that we are stuck with right now. So for those of you who had kind words um, and positive feedback, which was a lot of you, it was almost all of you, thank you very much. Um, it does mean a lot to me when I go through and read these things. I, like I say, I do really care about this course and I do really care about you guys as students. And so when you guys have positive feedback like that, it makes me feel good knowing that I'm actually doing the things that I'm trying to do. However, um, there are some things I'm going to go over. I'm going to be a little bit snarky about some of these things because some of them I think are a little ridiculous. Some of them are, are definitely based um, in, in solid reasoning on you guys' part, and I'll address those. The first one for the exam, um, I... I agree with you guys. I think that me cutting down the time is going to be tough and it is annoying. And I 100% understand why you guys are finding this difficult. Um, uh, essentially, to put your mind at ease, I just want to say that there only gonna be, there's only going to be one essay question on the second exam. I'm cutting the essay questions down. It makes it easier on me. It makes it easier on yourselves. Um, so you will not have to worry about spending that much time on the essay questions. If I was keeping the three essay questions, yeah, the 45 minutes I'm giving you would be not nearly enough. I 100% agree with it. Hence why I'm cutting out the essay questions I'm meeting you guys in the middle here. Um, uh, as for the rest of the exam, I apologize, but I'm gonna remain rigid on this. For standardized tests, they typically allow as little as 30 seconds per conceptual question. For this test, you're gonna have almost double that. You will have almost a minute to answer each, each question outside of the essay question. So I'm going to reiterate once more, if you were not cheating, if you were not using an outside screen or an outside source, this should be more than enough time for you guys, okay? You should easily be able to read a question in as little as five seconds, if not 10 seconds. And then that'll give you almost 40 to 50 seconds for you to answer the question conceptually, right? I know I have a little bit of short answer. I have some multiple choice um, and multiple answer questions. But again, me giving you three sentences to read should take you literally 10 seconds. And then answering the question should take no more than 40 seconds. Even if you're a slow test taker and a slow reader, you should still pretty easily be able to finish a question in that time if you know the content ahead of time. If you don't know the content ahead of time or because you're looking it up on a screen that's next to your screen, um, it's going to take you longer. So if you're studying ahead of time, you'll be fine. Um, additionally, like I said, I'm not suspicious of everyone who did well in the exam. I have some people expressing their anxieties about being investigated. Um, I apologize to those of you who have caused the unwanted and unneeded anxiety. I have a list of about 10 to 15 individuals who I'm highly suspicious of based on their high scores. But more importantly, I'm based, it's based on the fact that they were clearly looking off the screen while they were testing. Um, I mean, if you look at me right now, you know, it looks like I'm looking at the screen. And then if I look off and stare like this for 10 seconds and then come back and then look off and stare like this for 10 seconds and see the same exact spot every single time, I think you can all agree reasonably that more than likely that person was cheating. They were looking at a notebook, they were looking at a laptop, or whatever it might be. They're looking at some sort of outside resource. Okay? So if you were diligent and you were honest and you did well on the first exam and then you did poorly on the second exam, I will see that. I will see you looking at the screen. I will understand, right? As well as people who 
answer the essay questions very beautifully and fluently, but all of a sudden when they had multiple choice questions that were asking the same exact content, but in an easier way, got them all wrong or vice versa, got every single multiple choice question right, but wrote the most horrendous essay questions of or answers I've ever seen. You guys are also, and then also additionally got like a 95% or higher on the, ex, or on the exam itself. Those people I'm also a little bit suspicious of. I think that you can agree with me that it's reasonable that if you got every single essay question right, right, perfectly written very, very beautifully, but you don't know what a sarcomere is, right? You, you might be cheating or you don't know what a carbohydrate is. You might be cheating, right? Or vice versa. Like I said, you got every single multiple choice question correctly. But the second you have to write anything for yourself, you can't even spell some of the words that I spelled for you correctly. And you can't put any of the words into a sentence. And you can hardly even write a sentence that's even remotely true. I would imagine that you're doing that only because you don't know the content and because you're looking up the answers on something else. Again, I'm not trying to say this to belittle you guys or demean you guys. These are just the ways that I'm looking at it from my point of view as a professor and saying, hey, these are probably pretty strong indications that, that person was cheating. Now, again, if you were being honest, I'm not going to have an investigation launched into you that's going to affect your relationship with UCF or whatever it might be. I need to have pretty solid proof. Okay. So first of all, me just seeing you looking off the screen is almost enough proof. Realistically, it is enough proof for me to launch an investigation into you because you're not supposed to look for, off from your screen whatsoever. What would happen if I did that is it would take a whole bunch of work and then you would just have to come in and retake the exam. That's a headache for you. That's a headache for me. I'm not that big of an asshole. I understand. Right. So I'm not going to do that. But if I have the proof of you looking off and on the screen and then I use the lockdown browser, the second browser, and all of a sudden you go from a 97 percent to a 60 percent. It's going to be pretty tough for you. Right. You're going to have a pretty hard time explaining why your test average dropped almost 40 percent. OK, so and then again, if you go from like a 95 to like an 85 happens all the time you study differently for exams this is for those people that egregiously cheated that i can tell very clearly we're kind of looking up content and i can tell are not going to do as well on the second exam okay for those of you who just won't have time will have to have many emergencies coming up might drop by like 10 percent. you don't need to worry about this additionally like i said if you weren't cheating you don't need to worry at all okay so this is more as a warning again there's more sense to be kind of a uh an asshole warning to the people that were cheating saying hey i'm on to you you better get it together, otherwise you're going to fail from the course. Okay, I'm not going to take this up with UCF. I will say that too. I understand you guys are students. You're busy. Some of you don't care about this course. You just have to take it for whatever. I get that. Okay, I don't understand that because I love what this is. I love my field. I love learning these things. I think these things are really, really important for you to learn if you're going to be in the field. I, I that's what I think. But I'm not going to tar or tarnish your relationship with UCF. On this, okay, so I would give you that little bit of mind at ease. However. If I find out that you were clearly che cheating, I will have no problem failing you for my course, which means that you may have to take another semester in that capacity. But again, I'm not trying to do that on purpose, okay? Um, what else do I have here? Um, as for the perusal assignments, I take a long time to upload. I personally apologize for this. So essentially this occurs because some of the students have not accessed the material correctly like I had previously disposed, as well as some of the students in the course have not accessed the material at all. They just are in the course but have dropped and so they're still on the perusal stuff. Um, when this occurs, the sync between the perusal and Canvas has an error and I have to go in and manually do it. So it takes me a bit of time and I'm not overly keen to go in and manually enter grades one by one. So sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to do it and get the motivation to sit there and just click away and do whatever it is. Um, I know that, I guess that's bothering some of you because it's taking so much time. I will do better about this going forward. Okay, I didn't know it was bothering you. It didn't good matter that much because you're pretty much getting a 10 no matter what, um, as long as you're posting some reasonable responses. Going forward, I will do a better job about this. So you guys will be your grades back faster because um, I want you guys again to enjoy the course and I don't want to give you guys any unnecessary anxiety questions. Okay. Um, as for the complaints about the essay questions, all of my sciences dating back to my biology, 100 of my most basic science courses had essay questions, okay? You having science courses that does not have essay questions means that your science course is easier than it should be, right? Me having an essay question is not meant, me being an asshole, making the course too hard. You not having essay questions in your courses is those professors not testing you adequately enough on the material, okay? These are meant to specifically weed out students who do not fully understand the material, but are just regurgitating it, right? If you know what you're talking about, you'll be able to speak that. OK, the amount of students I have that are like, oh, I don't know it, but if I saw it, I would know it. I'm sorry, but that means you don't know it. 
Okay. If you can't tell me off the top of your head or you can't see like one cue and be like, oh, now I remember it. Now I can explain it to you. You don't know the material. That's just how it is. So essay questions are meant to not be easy. Okay. They're meant to specifically separate students into groups. And those groups would be A level understanding, B level understanding, C level understanding, whatever that might be. It's meant very, very specifically um, to be tougher questions and to make sure that you can reiterate what you are learning. You get into the field and you're a PT, OT, doctor, like I said at the beginning of this lecture, knowing what, when, and where is no longer enough. You need to know how, you need to know why, and you need to be able to explain it to people. Just because you know that a type 1 fiber is whatever, it's a aerobic fiber or longer lasting, okay? And someone goes like, how do you know that? You go, oh, I don't know. I just know that, okay? They're not going to trust you very much, okay? If someone comes in and they have an ACL surgery and you go, well, you need to do these type of eccentric extractions, these extensions. And they go, okay, why am I doing these? And you go, I don't know. Do you think they're really going to listen to you? No, come on. You have to know the material a little bit more in depth, okay? Um, as well as, guys, come on. I could not have been more clear about what's going to be on essay questions. I didn't tell you, hey, this material is on the essay questions, but I pretty much told you, hey, this material is on the essay questions, which I know for a fact is not usually done in courses, okay? So for those of you that were like, oh, the essay questions were totally unexpected. They were way out of line. I'm sorry, I don't sympathize with you whatsoever. You clearly weren't paying attention to my lectures. You clearly were not listening when I told you what was gonna be on them. I gave you specific bonus lectures telling you exactly what was gonna be on the essay questions, okay? If you think the essay questions were still too hard after I gave you specific lectures telling you what was gonna be on the essay questions, sorry to be frank, you just don't deserve the A you think you deserve, okay? If you can't put in the minimal amount of work just to answer the essay questions, I'm really, really sorry. You don't deserve an A. That's just how it is. That's cause and effects. You disagree with me, that's fine. But I think those of you who did the essay questions, did well in the essay questions, are sitting here like me, rolling your eyes at that and saying, damn, dude, not many professors actually tell us what's on the essay questions and you're still going to complain that I gave them to you. Yes, I'm thinking the same thing, okay? Um, again, and additionally... I feel the essay questions were fundamental to what you need to learn in this course. Bioenergetics, muscle contraction, oxygen delivery. Those are three things that are fundamentally covered in every single chapter and that you need to fundamentally understand to just know how the body works, okay? You breathe in oxygen. What is oxygen doing? Almost every single, it's doing every single aerobic process in your body, which is fires ATP, okay? Where are we getting ATP from? The three energy systems that provide ATP. That ATP is required for every single bioenergetical process in your body. Anything that requires any energy whatsoever in your entire body relies on ATP. So I think having an essay question asking just basically where the ATP comes from is pretty fair. And then finally, this is an exercise physiology course. How do you move about exercise? Muscle contraction. Everything you're doing, every movement you're doing, blinking, moving your mouth like I am right now, right? Sneezing, coughing, breathing. All of that is muscle action. And all of that is what I covered in that essay question. So I think that those were more than fair. Um, like I said, I understand that some of them are difficult for you. I understand they required more studying. Um, but again, this is this is a fourth level course, you guys. This is a course that you're taking before you move on into your graduate schools or move on out into the field. If you can't properly explain what's occurring within the human body. You should not be prescribing training therapy or anything to somebody. You should know what you're doing before you tell somebody else to do it, okay? Um, as for the clients uh, about extra credit, you're going to get a really snarky response from me right here, okay? I don't need to give you extra credit at all. That's that's just, that's how it is. That's basic and frank. I don't need to give you extra credit at all, but I am, okay? Because I want to. I think that's something that be, should be part of a course, okay? Some of the, the research studies that I've applied or have given you guys for extra credit take as little as two to three hours. I think that if you think two to three hours for extra credit that is worth one and a half quizzes, it's worth 15 points. That's one and a half quizzes. If you think two to three hours of work is too much work for that much extra credit, again, to be frank, you just don't deserve the extra credit. That's just how it is, okay? I think I could ask all 106 of you in this course, and I said, if I gave you two hours, right, and that would be the difference between a B and an A in your course, would you do the two hours of work? I think 95% of you would say yes, okay? So for those of you who think that two hours of work is too much work for 15 points or one and a half quizzes worth of extra credit, that's fine. I don't I don't need to give you the A, okay? And again, these are all making me sound like I'm an asshole, but this is just me being frank with you guys. I'm being honest with you guys. I'm trying to explain things from my point of view. Um, 
and I'm trying to make you understand, I think one of my philosophies in teaching is that just being personable with you and treating you guys like you're adults. You're adults. I'm an adult. If we have a logical conversation about why I'm making the decisions that I'm making, I think it helps you guys understand why the course is the way it is, as well as it makes you believe in me more as a professor. Okay, I'm trying to give this material to you, but also at the same time, you have to understand that I need to separate you guys into categories. Okay, I need to give you certain people A's, certain people B's, certain people C's. And unfortunately, for those of you who don't do the work and deserve it, D's and F's. Okay, and I don't want to give those out to you, but at the same time, you have to remember that the person who earns the A has to be separated somehow, right? And so I was just having a discussion about this, like rounding grades. Okay, I do like the round grades because I had a biology course in my undergrad where I was at a 99, or excuse me, an 89.91, right? And I asked him to round me and he did. And so I, I'm sympathetic to those of you who want to be rounded, but you have to think about it from the professor's point of view and from a postgraduate, graduate school point of view, Okay. Do you truly believe that the person who got a 98% in the course, they grinded all year, that almost perfect on the quizzes, perfect on the exams. Do you think that the person who got a 98% in the course should be in the same grade category as a person who got like an 88.5, didn't complete all the assignments, didn't do well on the exams and only studied a little bit, right? You would say probably no, right? But you'd be surprised at how many students get 88.5s or 88s even and will email me and be like, hey, can I be rounded up? I work super hard. I sympathize with you. I do want to round you up, but it's really hard for me to do that when it puts you in the same category as that individual who worked their ass off all semester to get that A. And if you were that individual who worked his ass off or worked her ass off all semester, worked their ass off all semester to get the A, right? I would think that you would be very offended at the fact that I'm giving people who got like an 88 or an 88.4 an A, right? Because you worked hard and I agree with you. You did work hard. So for that in this course, this is something I'm trying to do. Again, I know this is online. I know it's not as good as in person. Trust me, I know this frustrates me probably more than it frustrates you because I want to give this information to you and I want to get this feedback from you. But for those of you who think some of the some of the things in this course are too hard, I'm trying to move your way and trying to help you out. But you have to understand that there's a wall that I can't go past, okay? I cannot make this course so easy that everyone get A's because you frankly just don't all deserve A's. And that's just how life is. Okay. And if I'm explaining this to you, I'm sounding redundant and I sound like a millennial or I sound like a boomer or whatever. I, I, I'm going to stay, stick to my guns here. Okay. You need to earn what you have in this course. Okay. You need to earn what you need to get in this course. And if you want a, you have to put in the time. Okay. As for that going forward here, um, I want you guys to know I'm always a resource. If you guys have additional complaints or comments that you want to say, please, please reach out to me. Um, I'm going to do my best to make sure the second half of this course is uh, what it needs to be for you guys and you guys can learn a lot. Um, and as always, like I said, hope you guys are enjoying your spring break or you enjoyed your spring break. Hopefully um, you didn't, uh, hopefully you came back live first and foremost, and hopefully you had a good time. Um, so going forward with this course, uh, we got five chapters left. We got one exam. Um, guys, keep working hard. Keep coming to me with questions. I love helping you guys out. Um, and until next